My name's Edgar Wright, and uh, I'm directing one of the trailers for Grindhouse, and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. If you are thinking of going into this house, don't. I think for a whole generation that's grown up without knowing what a double bill was like, it's like the aim was to bring back the experience of being in the cinema and seeing two movies for the price of one, plus trailers. Which is where you come in. Which is where I come in. Just as she's coming to her mark, kind of like, go yeah. bonk, yeah. I think Quentin and Robert asked me to do the trailer because they were big fans of Shaun of the Dead. Hey, you know what, actually, just do one alternative where you pull before Stuart turns. It was great because they said very early on, would you be interested in doing a trailer? And I was like, uh, yep. <laughs> Probably one of the easiest decisions I've ever made. Don't look in there. Don't look up. Don't look anywhere. My film, in two words, it would be absolute nonsense. Don't move a m OK, let's try one more time very quickly. It wasn't difficult getting a cast together for this because I think people wanted to, you know, be in on the fun. It's kind of like doing, like, the most brilliant shorts, but a short that is going to happen to be seen on, like, kind of, like, 3,000 screens across the States. Don't even breathe. Don't. 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 Cut. <laughs> that was brilliant. Try one more. I'm Mark Gatiss. I've been dressing up as a kind of cross between David Warner and Roddy McDowell. <laughs> The backstory to this tiny trailer is more elaborate than many a film. It's a British horror film from the 70s which has been bought by American International and then redistributed with an American voiceover. Action! In the 60s and 70s, you used to get a lot of European films that would be given a different title in the States. There was particularly, there was a, um, as a sort of Italian-Spanish zombie film called, in the UK it's called The Living Dead at the Manchester Morgue. In Spain it's called Don't Speak Ill of the Dead which is fine, like two, you know, zombie-themed titles. In the States, it's called Don't Open the Window, which has no real, like, sort of bearing on the plot at all. There's no big window-based scene. So that kind of gave me the idea to do a horror film where, basically, they've got all the footage and they've kind of put up some crazy marketing spin and they're just going to sell it in a really aggressive way without ever explaining what the plot of the film is whatsoever. It was definitely sort of like a good excuse to throw in the kitchen sink. You know, I just like that kind of thing where it has style over substance, but it just looks amazing. If you are thinking of seeing this film alone, don't. Good, yes? Yeah. That was great. Let's check that. Excellent. So a lot of those films, like Deep Red, <laughs> Suspiria, Twitch of the Death Nerve, what an amazing title that is. Twitch of the Death Nerve. Who wouldn't go and see a film called that? I'm Simon Pegg. Hang on. OK. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm Simon Pegg, and I'm playing uh, Screaming Lunatic 5. <laughs> what I didn't want to do is have it too obvious that it was my one, so in the case of, like, Simon, who really wanted to be in it, I, I said, you can be in it on condition that you're unrecognisable, because I didn't want it to be that the first shot you see is with Simon Pegg, and then people say, oh, it's Edgar's one. You know, when Edgar calls, I come running, and uh, he just said, you're going to be in it for, like, one second, and you're not going to be recognisable in any way. Do you want to do it? And I said, hell yeah! Absolutely. So uh, I've come along here this morning and spent three hours in makeup and been in front of the camera for precisely ten minutes. <laughs> and action! <laughs> it's a prosthetic piece, obviously, forehead up to here, and then we have applied facial hair and a wig and contacts and these teeth, which um, I can't talk in, so I've taken them out. Grr. Are you seeing the end of it? It feels great. It's really good to get unrecognisable because you feel a bit sort of you can get away with naughty things. Like killing. <laughs> if you are thinking of opening this door, don't. There's actually quite a few actors that I've never worked with before, so that was really fun. 3.7. And Katie, body out a bit more, so you're already leaning out. That's good, that's good. I'm Katie Meloa, and I'm going to be uh, part of the science team, part of the group of people that come to the haunted house. <gasps> that's good. And basically, I'm going to witness my friend's head being that's chopped me. in half and, and screaming. Action. 
<laughs> it's just screaming, basically. Screaming, uh, and that's it. Action. I've never written anything where I've had to cast so many foxy English actresses. I thought, I've never, I've never done this kind of casting before. I think, what a terrible chore to get lots of, uh, lots of lovely English roses to be in the film. So that was fun. That was great. Oh, <laughs> Minty, nice. isn't it? Oh. It actually came through from the music department, because obviously I'm a musician. I think they found out somewhere that I was a, a huge horror fan. There we go. And they thought it would be very strange to have me in it because I don't know if people would see me in such a small sort of cameo doing such a strange thing. Um, so yeah, it was pretty cool and it just sounded like fun and, uh, and I said yeah. If you are thinking of checking out the basement... <laughs> It wasn't difficult to convince Nick Frost to play the part of a retired man-child. I think he'll agree that it's the, the role that everything's been leading up to. Well, you're sort of like your it's amazing that we've never seen this portrayal on screen before. And then you stand up. When I told him what the part was, he's like, I'm in. I'd, yeah, brilliant. I've never seen an actor so comfortable in their skin. Nick Frost's character is not particularly politically correct. The idea is that he's a retarded man-child who's chained up in the basement. So you're eating the baby and you kind of go, ah, and then you sort of see Lizzie go, ah, Where is she going to be? She's going to be where Mike is. OK. <laughs> the idea was that in a lot of those old 70s films, they would be so un-PC in terms of their treatment of um, the disabled and uh, people with learning difficulties. Even Jason in the Friday the 13th film is supposed to be, um, you know, a mongoloid. It's so, uh, yes. <laughs> so wrong. Yeah. So wrong on so many levels. It's stuff that you would not be able to get away with in this day and age, and nor would you want to. So I kind of thought in that the spirit of those films that we should have some kind of slightly uh, disadvantaged killer. I think my character name is Arthur. <laughs> Little Arthur. Little Big Big Arthur. <laughs> Little Arthur. There's <laughs> something about kind of like sort of like an adult baby aspect of it that's quite creepy. My name's Dick and I'm the art director. Um, yeah. Basically, uh, it's very seldom in life that two great passions come together. But uh, my, I've been very fortunate to be able to use my extensive doll collection and also my passion for manacles on this production. I have quite an extensive collection, yeah. ranging from the sort of just slightly prepubescent to the uh, classic sort, sort of 40s degenerating rubber version of doll. As you can see, you can put in your mind's eye, they were all here, lined up against this fake um, effluent on the wall. These ones were blowtorched them. I had to do that, it's quite toxic, but I felt quite good for a couple of days afterwards. I'm still getting occasional headaches, but I think that'll die down with time. It's just like an Eli Roth set. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's right here. Baby hostel. <laughs> Baby hostel. <laughs> well, the idea with each scene is that sort of like, you know, that you would watch the trailer and say, I have no idea what this film is about. And so one scene will have kind of like a cannibal killer. One scene will have a possessed school child. The next scene will have a professor being grabbed by some strange demon hands. Uh, the next scene will have a troop of zombie flappers. The next scene will have a man sort of hypnotised by a hangman game and then kind of like stringing himself up. So every kind of like scene just seems to have a different kind of premise. Don't, 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 don't. Doing this trailer has been so much fun. Even though we're doing a lot of stuff and we're getting a lot of shots, it feels nicely laid back in terms of like, there's no continuity. <laughs> we're not shooting any sound whatsoever. So to do something without continuity and kind of just be throwing in a different idea and a different actor in every single shot, is, uh, is great. I've had a whale of a time. I hope the audience will leave thinking, I have never seen Simon Pegg better in anything <laughs> than this three seconds of yelling with a knife. Because I put everything into it. I'd like people to come away and thinking, um, you know, sort of, uh, yeah, maybe his wasn't the best, but his was the fastest. His was the most succinct. He said, Edgar Wright really nailed the, sp the speed of that one. It was, it was fast. Uh, so, you know, maybe if I could succeed, it would be like it was not boring. Ha, 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 ha.